السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الله عز وجل شأنه has given us this Jumat al-Mubarak in the blessed month of Ramadan to do the zikr Allah and attain the taqwa the today's topic is taqwa I recited multiple verses from different places in the Quran and each one of them is a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for humanity and mankind to attain taqwa as many ways to describe taqwa, taqwa in the most easy way which I understood is that being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah dekh raha hai, Allah sun raha hai, Allah ke ilm mein, har cheez, the conscious of person to be that Allah is watching, Allah is listening, Allah is seeing, Allah is aware of everything what we do. And this is where we as a Muslim are being constantly reminded and one of the thing which is way to achieve taqwa as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says O you mankind worship your Lord the one who created you and the one who created one before you so that you may attain taqwa then the other ayah Allah says O you believe now the address is to us the previous address to the entire mankind, Ya Iyanas, all humanity, and here is the particular address to the believers that, O oh, you who believe, we have prescribed you fasting, Siam, the way we prescribe for nations before you, which means Christians and Jews, so that you may attain taqwa. And this is the purpose of this fasting, is to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are conscious, I mean, everybody is intelligent, is smart enough to know. We are told to abstain from halal things, which are allowed. Eating is halal, it is allowed. It's a right of a human to eat. Drinking is a right of a human to drink, to sustain their body's existence. Certain bodily pleasures, such as sexual activity, is a human right in the marriage relation. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, abstain from these things while you are in the observance that I am watching you at this moment. It is something of being in the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a believer to be in the state where we feel we are in closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, I'm closer to you than your juggler vein, but you need to become close to me. So Allah is close to everybody, but everybody is not close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So consciousness of taqwa, the concept of taqwa is that we should be all the time be aware that even though I'm alone and I have a situation where I can disobey Allah and His Messenger's command, the Quranic command, and also the commands of Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but Allah is watching me, so I am going to observe myself from not disobeying the commands of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, which could be anything which is sagair and kabair. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's hadith. I take the picture this time when I was in Masjid Al Nabawi Sharif. It is written. Shafa'ati ahl al-kabair min ummati. This is the way al-islatu wasalam will save us in the day of judgment when we have done the major sin by mistake or because we were not able to control ourselves as a human temptation and weakness, but we seek tawbah intentionally and pure intention and sincerity and not to do back, go back to the sin again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us as if the sin was never committed. And actually with the intention of in the hadith and other way to describe is that he turned the sayyat into hasanat. Allah can turn sin into a blessing if a person has a purity of intention, sincerity in action. And that is the taqwa which we are supposed to hold. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, <coughs> Ya ayyuhallazina amanu taqullah haqqa taqati. O people of Iman, have the consciousness and obedience to Allah and His Messenger the way He deserved to be. Wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslim. And do not find yourself in the state of dying except that you are in the state of Islam. So everybody is born in Islam, but the departure of Islam is important because every baby is born kullu mawludin ala fitra. Every baby is born in the world is a Muslim, but later on they become whatever they believe and practice. But when we are dying, and this is something to be understood, a Muslim will not face adab e qabr. The hadith which once before I reminded myself, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, they was performing a Salat al-Qusuf of the Eclipse Salat. Asma bint Abi Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and narrate from Aisha also being there. She tells that this was Nabi alayhi salatu was saying. 
that you people will face a fitna in the qabr which is almost similar to the fitna of the Dajjal al-Masih for the people who are on the ground, means the living versus dead. So the living people will face fitna, the Dajjal equal to that level of fitna, it will people who have died will face. And that was the fitna is what? A fitna means test. Fitna is not Urdu fitna of mischief. That could be translated that, but in this particular, a very difficult task, and the test will be given to every single person. <clears throat> every single person will face this fitna, and that is the most of the important question of the three, which we often hear from the hadith. But one of the three questions is the most important is being referred in this particular hadith. As we say, when we die in the grave, Munkir Nakir come, they ask, Man Rabbuka, Ma Dinuka. What was your, who is your Lord? Whoever has, whatever he worship, will say, my Lord is that one. And Muslim will say, Allah is Rabbi, Rabbi Allah. The second one, Madinuka. Whatever deen they practice, they will say that because they are aware of consciousness. And Muslim will say, deen il Islam. Inna deena in Allah il Islam. The third question is the one which is most importantly mentioned in this hadith. I was quoting two hadiths. This particular hadith refers the fitna of the cover is Ma kunta taqul fil rujul is the only ultimate question because they all follow their prophets or their preachers, whatever they follow. But the Muslim will be able to answer Muhammad Rasulullah. Sabbit aqdamahum. Allah will make their feet firm in this commitment that a Muslim believer who died man qala la ilaha illallah dakhal al jannah that is a hadith that whoever died on the shahada will enter the jannah and adab al qabr will not happen because the next portion is that the malaika will say to that person that look left side this would have been your place have you not answered the question and that was the hell place and now look at right this is the place for you in the jannah so your jannah the house and the palace which we will be getting will be shown to us in the cover on the right side and a person will be told to sleep like a arus so that you will wake up in the day of judgment and you will be entering into the so azab al-qabr should not come to a believer who died on shahada from this hadith, the conclusion, one who could not recite shahada at the time of death, that person is supposed to be facing the fitna. And that fitna that he would not be remembering. So we should know when we have to recite shahada, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad sallallahu we keep saying it only because when any moment person can die. And the shahada should be on our tongue as easy to flow. And this is here something we should understand. So Muslim as a believer, when we die, inshallah, none of us Muslim will be facing adab al qabr Because this is the three question to be answered. And those who did not do alam al barzakh when Nabi went to Mi'raj, he saw the alam al barzakh, the punishment of the people who did wrong being a Muslim or being not Muslim. Those punishments were given to show to Nabi he saw that what will be going on there. So we as a believer, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind us, then again, وَعَتَسَمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا Hold the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all together. Hablillah is Rasulullah sunnah and the Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that Ramadan is the month of Quran. Shahrul Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. Hudan lilnati ubayyinati min al-huda wal-farqan. So two things come together. The sunnah of Rasulullah and the Quran of Allah. Of Rasulullah also because it was revealed on Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. So we should hold the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this blessed month of Ramadan. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded in Surah Ali Imran, Ya ayyuhun nasa attaqu rabbakum ladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida. All you mankind, all children belong to Adam, all mankind. Address is to the entire humanity. Be conscious of God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your Lord, the one who created you from a single soul. And created the spouse from that one. And from two of them made a multitude of men and women. And be conscious of Allah, you will be questioned about your relation with the womb of your mother. So family relation is a very important thing. Good relation and easy relation is when you all brothers, sisters, as a Muslim family, we love each other. My brother loves me, I love him, but that doesn't happen. My brother and I are always in competition. 
my sisters and are always in competition and my cousins are always my competition because they are doing better than I'm not doing and I am upset because my brothers kids children are doing better than my children and this is the hasad there's a hasad and there's a envy there are two words hasad is that you're jealous of somebody which burns the deeds like fire burns the wood and the enviness is that you wish to be like that so wishing some to be like somebody is appreciation and jealousy is that you want them to be below and according to the ulama hasad jealousy is a sign of defying the god's will if somebody is better than me it's not my choice or their choice allah made them to be what they are and if i object on that it means i'm objecting allah why did you choose him over me that is something ulama says be conscious of it when you have you want to be like somebody so we look up to somebody as a role model and we look to somebody as to be best lesser than me and this is where the difference of happen so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding that womb relation of womb the mother's relation as we know parents are like a glue with elastic to it whenever parents are alive we all visit to them even though we are grown up we have our family we always visit them but once the parents die then we are becoming separate units. Brothers don't meet each other, sisters don't meet each other, brothers. And often the sisters keep the family together. It is a human nature. And they bring the family together. So make sure we inculcate this feeling that even the parents are there or not, we should meet together. We sometimes see our father in another brother. Sometimes we see our mother in our sister. We see those faces and those impressions and those feelings. And these are the real human feelings. Sometimes we don't know how to actively say that. But when you say, I'm missing that person. And that is my brother sister even though i hate because what they did to me but i have to meet and islam says even when they are breaking the bond you keep the bond and this is what islam says and nabi says if you give somebody what they want they will always come to you if you take what they don't want to then they will not come to you so we should be giver as nabi used to be so generous that anybody asked something he would give and sometime many times it happened he did not have so he would borrow from somebody as a debt and loan and take care of the person who asked for it and then pay the loan of his own so this is generosity why because nabi knew believe and he is the preacher of the fact that the life of the world is only temporary no matter how powerful and rich and wealthy and good looking we can be, but that's not going to be lasting forever. And we will be leaving this thing in the world. So this is what is being told that relation of blood relation. When we die, we meet our blood relatives also. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah, ta'ana alaykum Allah is watching and is close to us in all the acts and endeavors what we do. The second thing which we should also remember as a Muslim, why it is happening to us, why we are not paying attention sometimes we think asking prayer in arabic is the only way that is not true all the languages from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when we were young and we did not speak arabic what we do we said ya allah i want to pass my exam ya allah give me the success even though we were talking in our language as urdu or english or persian whatever language people spoke we found that prayer was answered allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listened all the language because allah created all the language Allah is the creator, of, but Arabic is preferred, so we should learn Arabic because it is the preferred language, of, uh, language from Allah. It is the language of Rasulullah. It is the language of our Quran. It is the language of the Sunnah of the Rasulullah and the Sahaba Karam. So we as a Muslim should make extraordinary effort to learn Arabic. And you know, there was a definition of who are Arabs. Today's modern definition of Arab is the one who speak language Arab. It's no more race because they are so intermixed. Egyptians were Coptics, they become Arabs. Ethiopians speak Arabic. So is the Sudanese speak Arabic. So it's not that the language matter. It is the matter which we should do it out of our need. As we all came to America, we learned English language and we made very, very much efforts to speak English like Americans. We should speak Arabic like Nabi Ali Salatu Wasalam, the first half. If you understand the fasa, because Arabic all across the world is written in fasa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, What is asa alaka ibadi and nifa in ni kareem, uji with dawat and da is a dan, fal yastaji buli wal yu mini bila no yashadu. So people, Sahaba says, Ya Rasulullah, how can we ask Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, When my slave, my abd, ask, call me, 
I respond to the call. The, no dua of a believer get wasted. According to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, three things happen, which we all know, just as a reminder, either the dua is accepted right there and that happened what we want. Second thing is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take the dua and remove the future hardship of the future of the, of the qadr of this person. The third thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps the dua and save it for the akhirah. And a person, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you know what Allah has saved for you, the ajr of the dua which was not answered in the dunya, you think it was not answered, when it will be given to you the reward in the akhirah, you will wish none of your worldly dua would have been answered. So we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhabanna. So we should ask Allah, not like the people just give me in the akhirah, give me only in the dunya, we should ask for both. This is the most comprehensive dua, hasana. We cannot even define what a hasana is, if we could feel the beautification and everything. Our relation, when we get up in the morning, did we not find a brand new day, a brand new existence? It was not yesterday, it is today. The moment we are here is brand new moment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us all these moments to be appreciative, to say Alhamdulillah, Ashukrulillah. These are the two things which we could do if we could put it on tongue. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ashukrulillah Rabbil Alameen. There's no better gratitude than these two words which we can say. Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam says, Kalimat khafifatatin ala khali khafifatan ala nisan muhabbani ala rahman saqilani ala mizan subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhana rabbil azim two words beloved to allah lightest on the tongue heaviest on the scale of judgment ah subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah al azim it does not even need memorizing subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah al azim and these are the two words which we should remember so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind us and this is the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that one should make fast and observe the restrictions of the fasting in the state of fasting. So it is not that we can do certain haram forbidden in the fasting, but after fasting is over at the sunset, we can do haram. No, no. Only halal are allowed after breaking the fast, eating, drinking, and having a spousal relation. So we should be mindful of that. And this is the taqwa that we should be aware of it. So the purpose of taqwa is to be knowing that. The other thing which I'm finding myself, and most of the Muslim among us, we all know that. I don't need to mention anything. That we have only one, one thing after Rasulullah left the message. There's one thing which is undisputed which is no question and no limit in the value of that. That is reading Quran, understanding Quran, and living by the Quran. So three part, reading, to read, we need to know the Arabic word. Quran was revealed, the original text is Arabic. So we can read the translation, but that is not the Kalam Allah. Translation is a man's word, man translated. This is the book, no doubt. Guidance for the mankind is a man's word. Allah's word is When you hear the Quranic way of saying it, when a human way of saying it, it does not have that power. It is for understanding. So if we understand Quran in Arabic, as Sahaba used to understand and Sahab all the generation till it was first translated in Persian language, which was no farther than five, six hundred years ago. Quran was taught and understood in Arabic so the context of the Quran could be understood. To understand some context, you have to know the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the companions and the situation, the shan and nuzul of the ayah of the Quran. So we could relate the sayyaq and sabaq, the concept and the context. So we should understand Quran in Arabic. So we need to learn Arabic alphabet, Arabic words. We don't need to learn entire Arabic language. It is great to learn Arabic language, but Quranic Arabic is obligation on each as a Muslim. We learn foreign languages. People become expert in Chinese and Russian, and those are the most difficult language to my understanding. But we do not learn Quran, which is 6,600 or 60 ayahs. This is very easy to remember. And we know that children who have not been to Arab land, they have memorized Quran. I saw an Irani child, somebody sent me a YouTube, three-year-old child, 
Hafiz al-Quran. Hafiz al-Quran. And the father read the words, incomplete, and he completed and read on three-year-old. Subhanallah, if a three-year-old can memorize, Subhanallah, we can make efforts. And Nabi wasalam, said, if a person tried to memorize Quran, and if he dies, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appoint an angel in his cover to keep him doing the hips, and then when he will raise him the day after, he will be among the Hufas. So it is the niyyah, it's all intention and efforts. We cannot do a whole lot every day, but we can do a little bit every day. We need to make resolution. This is Ramadan is a month of resolution for a believer that now I'm going to, I will spend all the efforts. Allah give us plenty of time. You want to go to school? You want to go to college? You want to get the marriage? You want to have the children? You want to make the living? You want to have the status? Everything, alhamdulillah, accomplished by most of us. Now we don't want to accomplish anymore. Instead, we just want to maintain the state. But we are old enough that we find that Quran cannot be memorized. Because the memory is gone. But the Quran has a beautiful thing about it. If you remember Quran, you will not forget it. As long as you keep reminding. We used to keep reciting it. And this is where Hufaz do it. Very simple. If you have memorized Quran in the past, make an effort little by little. We don't have to compete with anybody except ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure is what we're seeking. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us in Surah Hashim. Ya ayyallazina amat qullaha. Wantur nafsum ma qaddamat ligad. Wattaqu allaha. Inna allaha khabirun bima ta'amalun. Oh you who believe, have taqwa with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and watch what you send forth for yourself. Ma qaddamat ligad. And be conscious of taqwa with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna allaha khabirun bima ta'amalun. Allah is aware of everything whatever you have done or you do. Wa la takunu kalladzina nasu allaha fa'ansahum anfusahum. Do not be among those who forgot Allah, so Allah forget them, and they forget their own self. They were the disobedient. Fasiq is what? Description is about the believer. Fasiq is a believer. Kafir is a different category. Fasiq is one where Bani Israel, when they were believer and they disobeyed their Prophet and Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Qardatan Khasain, turned their faces into monkey. It was the believers who disobeyed Allah. Allah sent punishment upon the believers for disobedience after believing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, kallazina naswa Allah fa ansahum anfasum. Ulaikum al fasakum. La yasabi ashab al nari washab al janna. Ashab al janna tihum al faizum. La wanzana haza al Quran ala jabli la raita al khasha mutasadi al khasha tim al la. Util kalam salu nadri bahal al nasi la al lahum yatafakur. So do not be. And the people of hell and the people of paradise are not equal. The people of paradise are on the status of not ever ending, everlasting, of the place in the paradise in the Jannah. And if we have revealed this Quran on a mountain, it would have turned into dust with the khashi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the humility. So it was such a message. God's direct word came in month of Ramadan. Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. Hudal lil-nas. Ubayyanatu min al-huda wal-furqan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, these are, the, these are the examples we are giving to the mankind so that they may reflect and ponder. So we could do the fikr and we should reflect and ponder over it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is telling us and giving us the guidance and giving us the hope that we should not forget and get away from this thing. And this another thing, as a Muslim, we have found not by fact, it is a reality. When Muslims lost their power about 150 or 200 years ago, because of whatever reason, we don't need to go with the political or Muslims character or whatnot. The reality is we lost the status where Muslims were the leader of the world. And then when they came down 150 years of colonialism, when they came out, we suddenly found that the religion did not give us anything. Actually, it was not the religion, it was our failure. So we should understand what we did. We put the religion as a third party, as a secondary option. We did not focus on reading and learning Quran, understanding Quran in the context of the Quranic revelation and implementing it in our life. So if you do not know how to read, how to understand and how to apply and then live it in our own lives. We start thinking I'm a Muslim, so it's my right to be everything is my property and I own it. And this is what the when Israel think, they think the descendant of Judah are the only one chosen. Rest of the 12 tribes are not matter. This is why this is a religion of a family. They will nobody will, no matter how much you worship, they say you are not going to get a Jannah. 
They are the only one who's going to go to Jannah. If you ask the real essence of their faith, only you have to be a Jew to be accepted for the worship. I was talking to another Jewish, uh, another, uh, Jewish person, and I said, you say you have a promised land, right? And they say, yes. And I said, your promised land extends from the Sinai of Egypt all the way to the Euphrates between Nile and Farah. I said, yes. Okay. I said, who's the promised person? I said, Abraham, right? He goes, yes. Now he could not go back on that word. I said, Ibrahim was a promise that Allah will give him land between Euphrates to the Nile. That is promised land. I said, Isaac and, and uh, Jacob and all those were the descendants from the uh, Ibrahim. He said, yes. I said, what about the other son? I said, who is living in those land? They are called descendant of Ismail. They are the Arabs and they are the descendant of Ismail. And God promised them in the Genesis book that Allah will make him a great nation and the 12 sons were the princes and God was with them. And I said, they believe in what? I said, Ibrahim was neither a Jew nor a Christian. He was a Hanif, a Muslim. He was a believer of a one God. And I said, all the Arabs today worship one God. And they believe in the God of Ibrahim and the Quran says, Come to the one word which is common among us that we will not worship anybody other than the God of Ibrahim. I said, which Arab does not believe in the God of Ibrahim? And that, if they don't believe, then you have a right to say that, but you do not believe in the Ibrahim. So then he had no answer for that. I said, you're trying to create a war in Middle East to take over the promised land, but the promised land is already taken by the promised people. God promised he will make him a great nation to the Ismail in the book of Genesis. And God is with him. And the, all the Ishmaelites are today is turned into Arabs. And not just there, they have gone far beyond. How many you are going to destroy? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the wisdom and hikmah. This is why we need to read the Quran. Last word. This is the punchline of today's talk. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرَانَ مَحْجُورًا And the messenger Muhammad Rasulullah will say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment, Oh my Lord, verily my people deserted this Quran, neither listened to it, nor acted on it, law, its laws and teaching. And that is for us. We have made you the nation of the middle nation who will be given a status, a special place in the, in the day of judgment. We will be testifying on behalf of our prophet against their nation. And Rasulullah will be testifying on our behalf that yes, Ya Allah, this is my ummah and they are the rightful just witness of the prophets who came before us. But here's the Rasulullah saying, Oh my Lord, my nation took the Quran and abandoned it. Allah blessed us with, you know, one reminder. Every year Ramadan comes. Every year it reminds us, this is the month of revelation. Quran did not have a birthday. Quran is not a khalq. Quran is a kalam Allah. Zalik al-kitab al This is the Quran is not a khalq. We should not use the word birth of Quran. Revelation of the Quran. So we should be making a resolution today before we leave for the Jama'ah that we as individual I have a personal relation and obligation to learn, understand and implement Quran in my life. And if I do not understand something, obviously not everybody understanding everything. So I will seek the explanation of what I do not understand. And if I did not get it, sometimes we don't get it. So what we should say?
So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to make a resolution and we should pass this message to our family and our future generation and friends that make a resolution this Ramadan from today that I'm going to read Quran, I will understand Quran, I will learn Quran and I will implement Quran in my life. And that is Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam's hadith of Umar al-Mumin in Aisha. He was a living and breathing Quran. Quran is Samit or Quran is Natiq. This is Waqr Dawan Ali, alhamdulillahi rabbil alayhi.